Okay, so now we want to drill down a bit more into what the null and alternative hypotheses look like, okay? So the previous one we were talking about was playing a game. You can apply this to all sorts of things that we've got. So let's read through this question that we have. It says, an election candidate believes she has the support of 40% of the residents in a particular town. A researcher wants to test at the 5% significance level whether the candidate is overestimating her support. Okay, that sounds interesting. This is what the person wants to do. They think that the, cover, uh, the candidate is overestimating her support. The researcher asks 20 people whether they support the candidate or not. Three people say they do. So it's a bit like the game we were just playing, apart from it's not a game anymore, it's about doing a survey with someone and saying, do they support someone? So let's start off by thinking about this bit. It says, write down a suitable test statistic. And I've written inside this blue box that in a hypothesis test, the evidence from the sample is a test statistic. For binomial, the test statistic is always the count of the successes. So in this case that we've got here, the test statistic could be that let x be the number of people who support the candidate. That is the thing that we are observing and measuring. The researcher is asking these 20 people who are going to become the test statistic, because if they support them, then they will be included. Then it wants us to write down two suitable hypotheses. Now, this is going to sound really silly, but the way you write down a hypothesis test is you say capital H with a small zero, and then you do a colon. If you do equals, it's wrong. If you do a dash, it's wrong. You do H, small naught, colon. This is the thing where we're just assuming that what they have told us is true. So what should the probability be? given the information they've told us in this question. 0 0.4. Yeah, she says, she says I've got the support of 40% of the residents. So if that's true, that's what we're assuming to be true. She has got 40% of the support. But the alternative hypothesis, which we just do with H and a 1, again, you do a colon. Sorry, I don't even know. I've written that wrong. It should say P equals 0 0.4. Me doing my own question wrong. P equals 0 0.4. The alternative hypothesis is what we are going to think could be the alternative thing that could be the truth. This is the important sentence. The researcher thinks that the candidate is overestimating her support. So what does the researcher think that the probability is? Good. The researcher thinks you don't have 40% of the vote. You've got less than 40%. You're overestimating it. You're actually more like 35% or 30%. So this is what the researcher thinks. Okay? Then it says, explain the condition under which the null hypothesis would be rejected. In other words, when the um, alternative hypothesis would be accepted. The condition under which the null hypothesis would be rejected would be if... The probability that three people say that they do, the probability that x is less than or equal to three, if it is less than 0.05. I'm just going to explain that to say why that's happened, okay? I've said the probability that three or less needs to be smaller than 5%. Because that would make us think, no, -uh, she doesn't have 40%. She has less than that. Because if she asked 20 people, how many would we expect if it's 40% of 20? How many would we expect to support her if she says she's got 40% of the support and they've asked 20 people? Eight. eight. We would expect there to be eight. Not so zero. we're interested. She's got three, which is very low. Yeah, less than one and a half. One and a half of eight. Yeah, less than half of eight, three. <laughs> so we're actually saying, like, if she had three, two, one, or zero people say they supported her, if that probability is less than 0 0.05, then we would reject 
the null hypothesis, which is the same thing as saying accepting the alternative hypothesis. Three, if it's lower than that certain threshold, we're like, hang on a sec, she doesn't have 40%. It's actually, she's got less than 40% of them that we've got there. So we'll try another one of these as well, okay? Give you a few seconds to finish writing that down. If you've finished it, just start reading the next question. Yeah. So are you. It talks about people being late. I'm winding you up. Okay, I'm going to go on to the next part now so you can start reading this. It says, in the UK, 5% of students turn up late to school each day. Mr. Bison wishes to determine to a 10% significance level if his school, Morpeth School, has a problem with attendance. He stands at the front gate one day and finds that six of the 40 students who pass him are late. And I'm going to write down the, st the test statistic, two suitable hypotheses, and then I'll try and explain when we would be like, OK, let's reject the null hypothesis. Let's actually say that the thing is different. Pardon? I only sit there for a short amount of time. I haven't actually done this, obviously. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're going to let x be the number of what? Good, the number of late students. No, I haven't done this. We'll do a hypothesis test. I'll do it with this class. Okay, so the test statistic, I hate saying test statistic because it's too difficult to say. Let x be the number of late students, okay? We're now going to write down the two suitable hypotheses. So we've got H0 and we've got H1. We've got the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. The null is like what we expect. The alternative is like, hmm, maybe it's this. So what is the, like, the basic probability that we're expecting to see here? 5%, 0.05. Now, I stood at the gate and I found 6 out of 40. What is 6 out of 40? 0 0.15. I found 15% of them were late. I'm like, what? They, we must be worse than the rest of the country. Because I, I got 15%. I got 15% of the students that I did a little survey of were late. And you'll notice I actually said this. Mr. Bison wishes to determine if my school has a problem with attendance. So what do I think about the probability? I think that the probability is more than 5%. That's what I think, because of the evidence I've seen made me think that. So those are our two suitable hypotheses. And now what we're going to do is we're going to explain the condition under which the null hypothesis would be rejected. Now, I have just observed that 6 out of 40 students passed. So if the probability of x being something to do with 6 if that's less than 10%, then I would say I reject this. And instead, I think that the probability is more than 0 0.05. What am I going to put inside here, though? Am I going to say less than or equal to 6? I'm going to say more than or equal to 6 because I think if I'm going to reject the null hypothesis, I'm saying the probability is greater than 0 0.05. I would be concerned if there were 6 or even more students who were late. That's why I'm interested in it being more than 6, because my probability is saying, I think the probability is greater than 0 0.05. I think there's a problem with attendance if there were 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 more students that were late. So I always go in the more extreme direction that the question is talking about. Now, that would be enough for us to do this. That would be enough for us to just go to exercise 7a and do some of these questions. But I actually just quickly want to finish this hypothesis test so you get a sense of what's actually going on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assume that H0 is true, which is x is binomially distributed. There are 40 students that I'm going to be observing, and I'm going to presume that the probability is 5%. And I'm going to work out the probability that x is greater than or equal to 6. If it's less than 10%, then I'm going to reject this, and I'm going to say, now nah, the probability at Morpeth is higher than 5%. So can you calculate the probability that x is greater than or equal to 6? If you have a non-graphics, non you'll do the probability 
1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 5, because this is 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all the way up to 40, so you're removing the 5s. So if you have a graphics, you can just do between 6 and 40. And you're going to work it out, or is it just me? <laughs> it's not just me. Someone else should be doing it. Are you sure? That less than or equal to 5, isn't that? It's 1 take away 0 0.9861, which is 0 0.0139. Did you get that on any one of the graphics as well? Now, this thing is saying it's a 1% chance that six or more people would have come late to school if the probability was 5%. Oh. But we're saying that's so rare. In fact, that is rarer than 10%. So we reject the null hypothesis. Pardon? Meaning... The school has a problem with lateness. We will be doing this bit way more later on in the in the chapter. Okay. Which are the bits that you think are confusing you at the moment? Or which are the bits that we just kind of want to talk about a little the bit wording. more? The wording stuff. We will do lots more on the wording. But I mean the concept of what we're talking about here when we reject something or when we accept something. What questions do we have on that? Yeah, Islam. The C, the C part. The C part. The stuff if. if this thing. So this is what we would observed happening, right? We saw that there were six people who were late for school. The reason we said greater than or equal to six is because if I saw seven people late or eight people, I would still be suspicious that our school was doing worse than 5% on time. 5% late, sorry. If that probability is very, very low, if it's lower than the 10% significance level that was set to us, then we go, hmm, I'm, sus I'm suspicious. I don't believe this. In fact, I believe this. So you'll notice our probability that six or more people being late was very low. It was lower than the 10% that the question told us. That made me go, hmm, you know what? That's so low that I don't believe the null hypothesis. I actually think that there is a higher percentage of students coming to school late than the national average. So I think we've got a problem here. And then I'd go and try and get students to come on time. It's not going very well with this class, is it? Okay. So I'm just going to stop that bit here.